Well, good afternoon, Craig. Hey, How are Patrick. you today? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. You're just returning back from vacation because Indeed. Glad you got away. It was wonderful. Good. We got rest and space for just the two of us to talk and good process a lot, and it was good. Praise was the really Lord. Good. Yeah, it was awesome. Praise the Lord. Well, the church has been praying for you in this journey. And Thank praying you. for Deanna as well. And, Thank you. And family, and uh, knowing that her mom's in the hospital yep. uh, today. Uh, praying for her Thank as you. well, so Thank just you. so you know. Uh, I wanted to start these conversations, just kind of weekly uh, chat, because the cool thing about um, you and myself is we we have a chance to wrestle with the text that the church is wrestling with uh, each week. And um, I, I think sometimes that our conversations go some really cool, cool ways, and I just, I love to hear as I throw out a question, your responses and what you have to say. So I'm, I'm basically just going to include everyone in uh, this conversation together. Include everyone in this conversation of, of how is it we end up with what we have on Sunday morning. Sure, you know, yeah. How is God directing us? Yeah, that's great. And, and we start with the scripture passage, which this week, um, we finished up uh, Exodus last week. Right. And ended up with a Big Ten you know, commandments and conversation, and now we're we're running back into the New Testament in Philippians chapter four, mm -hmm. uh, the Apostle Paul's conversation. And it's a great passage. It's memorized. It's quoted by a lot of believers in times of trial and in times of concern. But as you look at the passage of Scripture for this week, yeah, uh, as well as others who are studying it along with us, I mean, what stood out to you? What what kind of theme do you think is going on there? Well, I'll tell you. In my processes, um, as I'm kind of considering how our congregation will get inside the text from a praise and worship standpoint every week, I usually start with um, just reading the passage itself, and then I just take a couple of minutes and meditate on it and pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to maybe bring some insights out of it that maybe my eyes wouldn't first see. And I'll tell you what happened for me in this particular passage. As you pointed out, people run to the uh, be anxious for nothing, right? Uh -huh, right. Just like we all resonate with that because the world is filled with stress and chaos and uh, concern of all different kinds, pain. Right. But that particular phrase is nestled within some really great language that talks about rejoice in the Lord always and thanksgiving and how important that is. And so it, it what what jumped out at me in a new fresh way is that part of this discipline of being anxious for nothing is being disciplined to put all of our confidence into him, to rejoice in his greatness, mm -hmm. to make that part of our exercise, if you will, of, uh, of uh, discipleship. And then to enter those gates with thanksgiving and to tie that to the Psalms, you know. And so uh, my mind right away was going to a lot of songs that I honestly didn't include in this week's set, but songs like, um, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past and um, even The Church is One Foundation. Because we, when we start rejoicing in the Lord, then we get pretty quickly to his attributes, his qualities, the name of the Lord, you right, know, what right. What are we thankful for? Well, man, of all things I'm thankful for, I'm thankful supremely for Jesus, yeah. for his sacrifice, for his blood, for his resurrection, but for his name. And so, mm -hmm. man, my mind went a lot of places as I was really doing my best to be um, intentional to do exactly what the scripture said, rejoice in the Lord always. Mm -hmm and to let my praise abound in him. And mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's that's what jumped out at me first this time, you know, is that this popular phrase, be anxious for nothing, is cradled right in the middle of some really great instructional language for us. Right, you right, know? right. Um, and I think, I think part of what I was looking at this week is very similar is uh, my eyes are drawn to those passages that we, uh, that we know, rejoice always, again, I say rejoice, type passages um, and so those are things we kind of cling to mm -hmm. and I think the the initial phrase for me was a, a lot of times we start small and go big and I think uh, many times if, if you're if you're in a counseling setting 
Hmm. Sometimes they're like uh, they're like baby steps that you uh -huh. that you're guided through. Okay, but um, when it comes to our worship experience, um, the Apostle Paul before this chapter four and chapter three gives this this big cosmic look. The Paul helps us see the bigger picture first mm -hmm. so that we now have reason for these smaller uh, 1.1 offs that the Apostle Paul includes in the last part of his letter. Yeah. It's almost like, oops, P.S., uh, you you two need to think in unity. Evidently, evidently there was some disunity. Or, mm -hmm. uh, P.S., rejoice in the Lord always. Uh, be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why would we have reason to do that if it weren't for this big picture first and so in my mind I'm thinking create a big picture first which gives a foundation to why we would rejoice always or why we wouldn't be anxious uh, and so this this conversation in in chapter 3 begins to inform what we're doing here which is uh, one of my points uh, for Sunday for people who want to write their notes ahead of time right <laughs> yeah yeah uh, one of my points for Sunday is is start big and and then the small will just make sense. That's really so, good. It, it causes me to think too, Pastor, that um, it, it, if we start from that macro perspective and, and zoom down, by the time we get to be anxious over nothing, because we've been walked through so many big picture items and then into the essence of praise and worship mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. The instruction to be anxious for nothing really almost is default. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, because praise disarms fear, worship disarms anxiety. So it's almost to me like this: be anxious over, be anxious for nothing. Statement is kind of like, well, you you're not going to be anxious over everything. By the time you walk through the grandeur of who He is, consider mm -hmm. His magnitude, consider all that He's done for us, His miracles, His love for us, the sacrifice of Christ, consider a person of Jesus, you're not going to have anxiety. <laughs> really, if we could learn to live there, it right. would disarm so much of, you know, it, it, there's there's this, when you read, apart from all that context, when you read Be Anxious for, uh, Over Nothing, mm -hmm. it seems like a tall order. Right, when, because you your mind automatically goes to the laundry list of things that you're uptight about, mm -hmm. and that you're saddled with. Mm -hmm. But in the light of who he is, all of that fades, right? Mm -hmm. And so, being anxious over nothing is actually a natural after effect of our worship. Right, and you brought two two things I think are are key and part will play. Uh, 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 kind of a, a role in the notes Sunday. One is the mind, uh, the, the the power of the mind. Mm -hmm. um, and so that'll surface in the conversation. The other thing is, I heard a pastor say this week that you can either pray or be anxious, but you can't do both. Mm. You can either pray or be anxious, but you can't do both. That's good. And so um, there's that mind and that intentional discipline of of framing f framing all these things we're dealing with the anxiousness we want to be anxious about um, in in light of God's cosmic power authority and creation and who God is we have no reason to worry yeah because he's the God who started this whole thing uh, from creation on in the beginning anyway you know you mentioned that we were on vacation all this kind of relates because there was a moment for Deanna and myself when uh, we were looking out over the water down mm -hmm. on the beach right after we had heard the news about the unrest that had developed over in Israel. Yeah. yeah. And I said to Deanne, I said, isn't it the oddest thing that halfway around the globe, as you and I are sitting here beholding the beauty of God's handiwork, right. and some of the finest display, sure. and we're soaking in God's goodness, mm -hmm. that all of that horrific calamity is taking place for other people. It's just a completely different context. Mm -hmm. But the same world, same creator God, over it all, under it all, through it all, in it all, um, and yet it's easy in the context of looking out over the beauty of the ocean to fix your eyes and your heart upon who he is as opposed to right in the middle of unthinkable tragedy. and. Right. 
right. you know, horrific terror that that, that the folks in Israel are, are experiencing. Mm-hmm. And but again, if you take the word at face value, in either circumstance, he's sufficient, right? Mm-hmm. Above it all, beneath it all, through it all. Yeah. It's where do we put our confidence? And I think where we get lost a lot is we put our confidence in our in ourselves, in our in our fleshly desires, even in uh, our history. You know, we can mm-hmm. put, have too much confidence in where we've been mm-hmm. and experience, and not really have confidence in His Word and in His truth. Right. There's always uh, something to worry or to be concerned about, and um, and in in light of you know, all the things that are taking place in the Middle East. We continue to be prayerful for the Nazarene pastors and churches mm. that are there as they respond and care for that that need. For sure. Um, but, you know, each of us um, are in a place that we can uh, not only pray, but as we gather and worship, uh, we, we basically worship out of that hope that someday all this mess will just be completed and we'll see Jesus face to face mm. and that's that's the that's the incredible hope that God has for us but uh, I, I know the church will be glad to have you back on Sunday you had a great team oh, uh, I'm so grateful well. for Lori and Rick and the whole team there I'm they so did, grateful they did great I uh, know you were missed and we just look forward to, to to worship on Sunday and I look forward to to seeing the song selections I haven't looked at your order yet but seeing the so- song selections that you you put together Uh, as we kind of both listen and pray about this passage of Scripture. Thanks for joining us again. Oh, thank you for inviting me into the conversation. I'm grateful. Yep, you're loved and prayed for. Likewise. All right, God bless you. Likewise. Thanks, Pastor.